you may not know what this creature is called. It's, it's very obscure. I don't think you guys may know, but it's called, and I'm sorry if I pronounce this wrong, a skeleton. It's the Pumpkin King. What is up, guys? It's Bangman Chief Fan here. Welcome back to another video. And I literally bought this yesterday, not because I knew I was going to get tagged in this video. Because, in fact, I was only tagged an hour ago, and I just came home from school saying, "Ah, I got tagged by the restricted section." Thank you very much. And Sue, you looked fantastic in that video. Same with you, Meg. But uh, yeah, can I call you Meg? I'm gonna call you Meg. I don't care what anybody says. But uh, um, what I'm gonna be doing today is the Monster Mash book tag, which is very interesting because it goes with the lyrics of the song from what I think so. Yeah, it goes exactly with this. Yeah, it goes with the song. And that's such a clever idea that, you know what, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to sing it throughout the entire video. So, enough chit chat and all that. I didn't wear any makeup like they did in the video because I'm just lazy. So anyway, let's get into it. Question number one. I was working in the lab late one night. What book that cape kept you up at night? Well, this was during book Tubathon, and that is Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. The only reason why this kept me up at night was because it's so good that I was addicted to it. I literally stayed up till midnight. I didn't stay up the whole night, but I went past midnight reading this. It was such a brilliant book. It's easily my favorite LGBT book of all time. If you haven't read it, go check it out. It's literally about a, a person who was named Cal who was born as a girl, but then went, goes through a gender, like a, like a, what's the word for it? Oh, I'm probably insulting so many people right now. Uh, gender change. Why was that? Why was that so hard for me? But, yeah, Middle Sex by Jeffrey Eugenides, it's wonderful. It's just a, it's half family saga, half LGBT. So, and it's the T, I'm guessing T is meant for transgender. So, that's, that's what this book is. It's all about transgender. So, yeah, I'm really, I'm, I highly recommend this book. Two, my eyes beheld an eerie sight. What is the weirdest or creepiest stuff that you've ever read in a book? Well, this isn't creepy whatsoever, but this was just weird and pointless. In fact, after thinking about this book, it's really not that good. <laughs> and I, and I, it's just so weird because it's so pretentious that I enjoyed it. But now thinking back on it, it's, it's just pretentious, guys. I honestly wouldn't recommend this book anymore. And that's The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. Uh, even though I own this book, I never see myself rereading this ever again, so I may just box this up, but it is a gorgeous edition, I will admit. Uh, the one thing that I want to say about this book, and the, my answer to this question, is that there's this little girl in here, who's a weeaboo! I, I'm not even joking, she's like, there's, she has like this Japanese neighbor, and she's obsessed with it, there's literally a point in this, uh, uh, book where she references, I think, Death Note, and I'm like, of this this is about like the whole story is about like this janitor who finds love and she's like completely ugly and then they had this subplot where this girl happens to be a weeaboo and it threw everything off it literally made everything so much more pretentious it literally was written in like online word document letter form and it was such a disgusting not disgusting it wasn't insulting or disgusting in any way but still it was just embarrassing more than anything. I was just, like, face-palming the entire time with their parts. And while the other woman, whose name was Rene, I think is how you pronounce her name, yeah, but her parts were fine, but this girl just ruined the book for me. It's just, like, just just don't read Elegance of the Hedgehog if you ask me. It's it's not really that good. Number three, get a jolt, jolt from my electro electrodes. Um... I, I don't remember that lyric. Uh, name a book that completely shocked or surprised you. This is actually the last book that I read, and I was stunned by how good this is, because this is a nonfiction history book. I've never really read a formal history book is in quite a while, and I was stunned by how good this was. And it's uh, David McCullough, 1776. Uh, of course, this is about the American Revolution in the year of 1776, and it's is 
wonderful. It is absolutely wonderful. David McCullough is such a great writer. He literally makes George Washington a character. He makes, like, Thomas Jefferson a character, Ben Franklin a character. All, of, like, the massive, like, people. But then there's also, like, people who aren't, like, w known by everybody. Like, there's, like, this person named Nathaniel Green. I think he's very, pretty well known, but not as well known as, like, George Washington or Thomas Jefferson and stuff like that. But... It is a wonderful book. If you're interested in history at all, I say David McCullough in general is the first guy you should probably go to. And this and his and the rest of his books are pretty long, but this one's really short, so I highly recommend this book. It's fantastic. For the guests included, Wolfman, Dracula, and his son. I'm not even gonna try to sing it anymore. Um Name your favorite monster or villain from a book. Now, I've decided to only do one Stephen King in this book, and you guys probably know what it is. It's my favorite Stephen King book of all time. I am doing Annie Walkins. Walkins? Walker? Wilkins. Wilkes. I, I messed that up so much. Annie from Misery. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I get that name messed up all the time. I thought it was Walker for the longest time. But Annie Wilkes from Misery. Holy mother of God, just talk about a psychopath. Just, I'm not going to spoil much. In fact, I'm going to keep this very short. But yeah, this is wonderful and terrifying. This is like, like I was talking to my English teacher about this, and she said she was a huge Stephen King fan until she read Misery, which scared her so much that she hasn't read a Stephen King book since. And that was really interesting because this was the book that got me hooked on Stephen King. This is amazing. And just the way that Stevie King writes her character, and the way that she completely affects Paul Sheldon, and just, ugh. I'm not going to give any spoilers, because if I say anything else, I'm going into massive spare spoiler territory, including the infamous ending. So, yeah, Misery by Stephen King. I've also heard amazing things about the movie, so... Yeah, Stephen King's Misery. Who hasn't heard of it? And if you haven't read it... Go read it, it's awesome. Five, whatever happened to my Transylvania twist? Name a book that, that was super hyped when it came out, but no one talks to anymore. What is your favorite plot twist or book with the killer plot twist? Um, is this two questions? Um, I'm only going to answer one of them because I was only set to read one of them. So, that is, the one I'm going to choose is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. I've heard a million, gazillion, bazillion things about this on, in 2015. I've heard it zero times on in 2016. And it won the Pulitzer, so it has to be, like, at least decent. Or maybe not, because I've heard, I've heard terrible things about some of the Pulitzer Prize winners. But I've heard such amazing things about this book. So, I don't know. I'm, I think I may eventually... I think I'm finally going to read it by the end of this year just to see if it's any good, because I did buy this for five whole dollars. Ha! The whole first edition hardcover for five dollars. Oh, what an investment. But yeah, I got this really super cheap. But yeah, I'm just so pumped to get into this. Even though it's slowly dying away, I'm still hearing good things on like Goodreads and stuff. It's just BookTube. I've never really heard, hear anything about it anymore. So yeah, All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. It's it's probably going to be great, but I just need to have some time to just finally get to it. And it's not even that long. It's like 500 pages. Yeah, it's not short, but it's not extremely long either. So, like, I just read a 700-page book. So, yeah, I should probably get to it real soon. They did the mash! Name the, uh, your favorite book that is a mashup of two or more genres. This may be crazy, guys. This may be crazy, but it's actually The Catcher in the Rye. Get this. So, Catcher in the Rye... Is like this dystopian twist with sci-fi elements and fantasy elements. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. It's uh, uh th this book is pretty much just a coming of age story combined with literary fiction and a couple elements of YA. But this was very, really, way before YA was even really a thing. So yeah. So Catcher in the Rye. It's my favorite book of all time. So and if this counts with that, I'm putting this in right here, right now. So. I'm not even going to say to read it. Just read it. They did... It was a graveyard smash. Well, I'm... Uh, oh, I forgot to read the question. <laughs> um, What is your favorite horror novel? I'm putting Misery by Stephen King again. Now I'm going to say it. I'm done. Boom. Read it. It's a 
awesome. The scene was rocking, and we're the digging this, and we're digging the sounds. What's your favorite book song based on a book? Wait, what's your f song? Oh, I did this wrong. Oh my goodness, I did this wrong. What's your favorite song based on a book? Okay, I did the exact opposite, and I uh, did uh. Is Haruki Murakami's Norwegian Wood because this book is based on a song and I was supposed to do a song based on a book Whoopsie, but I'm doing this anyway. It's my it's my video, whatever, but <laughs> I'm probably insulting the person who made this tag, but wait did they make this tag? They made this tag they <laughs> the restricted section made this tag <laughs> I am sorry, but I read that wrong so and I'm not doing this again, so Norwegian Wood, it is awesome. I, well, it's not awesome. It's pretty good, but it's not awesome. There, this is, I don't know what else to say about Norwegian Wood. What else to say? I'm, I'm off track today. I just came home from school. So, Norwegian Wood, it's about this guy named Toru who falls in love with these, with this girl named Naoko. I think that's her name. Yeah, Naoko. And things happen. And let's just say this is not the most happy book in the world. So, Norwegian Wood, I don't know what else to say about this book that hasn't been said before. It's incredibly famous. It's probably Murakami's most famous book. It's either this or The wind up Bird Chronicle. It's good. It's really good. It's his best realistic novel, if you ask me. Because a lot of because his best novel is The wind up Bird Chronicle, but that's pure magical realism. So, yeah, Norwegian Wood, it's great. Tell them Boris sent you. What is your go-to book recommendation? Now, this may be shocking because people may be thinking, Ah, oh, Catcher in the Rye. No. And in fact, I was originally going to do Animal Farm by George Orwell, but then I decided there's actually one book that I've actually recommended more than any of them. Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I recommend this book like wildfire. And even though this is an incredibly famous book, there's still gazillions of people that book read, avid book readers that have not even touched this book. And this is just so sad because this is a modern masterpiece. It's one of my favorite books of all time. If you don't know what Slaughterhouse Five is, don't. You're lying. You you know what Slaughterhouse Five is. But if you don't know what it's about, it's about this man named Billy Pilgrim who gets unstuck in time, and he pretty much goes back and forth, back and forth between random events between in his life. There's no specific order, and when he goes to them, there's no specific time range when he goes for them. He just it's completely random, and he doesn't know when he's where he's going next. And it's just wonderful. Slaughterhouse Five, it's one of the masterpieces of magical realism and just postmodern literature in general. If you haven't read it, what are you doing? Go read it. It's it's amazing. For you, the living the ma this match was meant to was meant to. Who do you tag? Everybody. They, they legitimately. I am looking at the tag list that they did already. Legitimately. Drunken Library. They're like loads of people on this list. I see like Peter, Jess from Ever Reads, Strip Cover Lit. Uh legitimately, there's everybody on here. The only person I'm not seeing is Steve Donahue. Let me check just to make sure. All right, Peter. I uh, Peter. <laughs> well, Steve, I re I then tag you because you're like one of the only people that you're like one of the five people that they left out in this entire realm of booktube. So yeah, I tag you to do this tag, and if anybody else wants to do this tag, go right ahead. I'm not restricting anybody. I've just wanted to do th give this to Steve just to make sure that he wasn't excluded. So yeah. So that was the video, guys, and I'm still looking into this skeleton soul right here because it's it's the skeleton. It's I love like the culture of the Day of the Dead. I like I if I can find like a couple more of these like skeleton things and it's like they're different. I'm definitely doing it. I love like even though I don't celebrate it, I love like the culture around and the story around Day of the Dead. So. Yeah, I'm just trying to decorate my room differently from now on. So, anyway, that's the video. Comment down below on what you guys thought of this tag. If you're interested in doing this tag, go ahead and do it. And, as always, I'm Mega Man Chief Fan, and I'll see you later, guys.